But I think that Sean Fain might be a terrorist, bro. Either he a terrorist or he a hero. I don't know what to believe anymore. Because I believe that he believes so much in his cause that he's willing to do whatever it is in order to win. It is hard to negotiate against a person like that. It's very, very, very difficult to negotiate with a person like that. So what I decided to do is he actually had an announcement this morning. He did a live stream this morning. Sean Fain from the UAW, Trump went over there and he talked to the auto suppliers and Trump's message here. I'll share with you Trump's message really quickly. Give me a second. Before we get over to that, I want to share with you what Trump's message was, right? This is what he said to the people. Fox News, Dave Kinchin had a front row seat. Dave. Yeah, you can, you can tell the crew is breaking down here at Drake Enterprises moments after former President Trump left the building here, speaking to a crowd of at least several hundred inside and many outside. Here's what we know. This had the backdrop, of course, of tense talks between the UAW and the Detroit Three, and former President Trump used that backdrop to talk about his experience when in his record as president when it came to what he said was saving men manufacturing jobs. He says that President Biden, who was just here yesterday, of course, rallying with UAW members, he said that Biden's plan for the economy and for the auto industry would actually strengthen China rather than the American auto worker and worker in general. Here's more about what President, <laughs> former President Trump had to say and what people who opposed his appearance said as well. And the workers of America are getting, to put it very nicely, screwed. You're getting screwed. Yesterday, Joe Biden came to Michigan to pose for photos at the picket line. And I agree with him. It was nothing but a ploy. And they all are going to say, well, yeah, Joe Biden came out here and he got his bullhorn and he stood with the people and he had a conversation. No, Joe Biden was basically doing that for votes. Have y'all noticed that none of these politicians actually show up to any of y'all cities until election season starts to start hitting? When they want y'all endorsement, then they're going to start looking for, for votes and looking for a large endorsement from the UAW. Well, I was out there with you guys. He's absolutely correct. That's one of the reasons why I actually uh, rock with Trump in a lot of instances, because he just tells he just tell it like it is. He's like, yo, he came out here for a photo op. He wasn't really looking to kick it with y'all. What you think he was doing? He wasn't really trying to rock with you. What you think, he on your side, he on my side? But it's his policies that send Michigan auto workers to the unemployment line. He only came after I announced that I would be here. You know, he announced quite a bit later. Spoke for a few seconds. Did you notice he spoke for, what, a few seconds? And he had absolutely no idea what he was saying. He didn't know where he was. <laughs> he didn't know where he was. He didn't know what we were saying. Where am I? He's saying, where am I? Oh, you're in Michigan. Oh, that's great. What are the <laughs> <gasps> I will admit, <clears throat> Trump is very entertaining, A. And then B, Biden, to a larger extent, just looks like a corpse out there. I mean, he looks like he has no clue what is going on, that he does not know his right from his left, and he got to have his cue cards on with him. That's the honest to God truth. But let's continue. What they do in Michigan? They grow weed in Michigan, he said. Why is it that these big, powerful car companies with guys that are making $35 million a year immediately quit. They say, you want electric vehicles? We'll give it to you when the damn things don't go far enough and they're too expensive. And I'm not in that business, but I know a lot about it. They don't go far enough. We're here to say hell no to Donald Trump. He needs to not be in here. People should come out to stop him from, from his bigoted attacks on the people of Michigan. We need Michigan to stand together for immigrant rights, for union rights, and against Donald Trump. He's here to try to strike some points and win some votes, which I don't think he's going to do because he's here at a non-union shop, so he's showing who he really is. He is anti-worker. He is... Pro-fascist, racist, criminal. 
criminal that needs to be in jail for trying to stage a coup. So, Trump and Biden was in Michigan, uh, making that, putting that at the forefront of what it is that they felt like was necessary. Uh, but Sean Fain <clears throat> gave everybody an update on what's going on with the UAW. So I think that it's uh, important for us to hear what it is that he had to say. And he did a live stream this morning, so let's go ahead and check that out. I want to show you exactly what was communicated. Good morning, UAW family. I apologize for being late, but mere moments before our Facebook Live this morning, we received a flurry of interest from the companies in addressing some significant bargaining issues. As you know, this morning we will be announcing the next targets for our stand-up strike as we fight for a historic victory at the Big Three. But first, as always, I want to take a moment to honor our members who are already on strike. Together, we're putting the fight back in the UAW and in the entire labor movement. A union that's not prepared to strike to win is like a fighter with one hand tied behind his back. Without the strike weapon, the war on workers is a rigged fight. For decades, it's been the same story. Unchecked corporate power, disappearing worker power. The result is massive inequality across our society. To restore the balance of power, we have to restore the strike. That's what every one of our striking members is doing. Our local 2326 strikers at West Rock Packaging in Dayton, New Jersey, are standing strong for the affordable health care that every person should have a right to. Our local 644 members at Dometic outside Philadelphia are standing up to a global corporation that makes billions in profits but won't pay every worker a living wage. Our strikers at Thombert in Newton, Iowa, at local 997, are fighting for work-life balance that every worker deserves. Here in Michigan, our members at Blue Cross Blue Shield are striking to stop the outsourcing that puts CEO pay before patient care. I'm about to drop the link in the chat for you guys to be able to cam up. And if you have a disagreement with me, you do not have to be on camera. But if you disagree with anything that I stand for, anything I've said on this show, anything that's said this week, anything that I said before, feel free to come up here and hold me accountable. Again, you do not have to get on camera. Let's remember that our <laughs> movement is fighting everywhere, not just in Michigan, but from east to west and from north to south. Our members at ZF in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, make axles for Mercedes when they're on the job. Today, they're on strike. They're teaching Mercedes the same lesson we're teaching the big three. Not a single wheel will turn without us. And that's what's happening across the vehicle supply chain. Members of UAW Local 259 at an Infinity dealership in Long Island, New York, faced down the boss and won a new agreement. They called a strike in the morning, and by the afternoon, management caved. Now they have a new agreement with serious gains and no concessions. Our members at Mack Truck may also be hitting the picket lines when their agreement expires at midnight on Sunday. Sadly, Mack Truck is following the same tired playbook as so many of our other employers. They're dragging out bargaining till the very last minute. The company took three weeks to respond to our economic demands, and then they put a long list of concessions on the table. Our members at MAC voted by 98% to authorize a strike. So unless the company gets serious, they're about to learn firsthand that our union's back in a fight. Yo, let me tell you something. I don't know if you just get rid of the whole thing and start all the way over. I don't know if it's a possibility. I don't know if the company is willing to go through that much pain. The only way that you can deal with something like this is to continue to just is to break it. Honestly, because because if they don't understand it from a business perspective or if they're not actually willing to meet you in the middle and negotiate, if they don't understand the cost of transitioning over into electric and that they actually plan into the hands of somebody like a Tesla. <clears throat> if they don't understand the impact that's coming across the board as a result of that, you got to figure out how to break them. 
You got to figure out how to completely break them. That's my that's my philosophy. I don't negotiate with terrorists at all. I figure out how I can destroy them. The only other way to do that, or the only other way to deal with it, is to give in to to most of the concessions, wind up ratifying a contract, and then figure out how it is that you can outsource them and plan for it for the next one. Because there's no way that this is a, a, what they're asking for a 32 hour work week, 40, 36 to 40 percent pay raises. And then they comparing themselves against CEO pay and not actually comparing themselves against the cost of actually manufacturing the vehicles. You got to this is what I believe is going to happen. I believe that the UAW, even though our federal government is incentivizing factories to be made back here in America, I believe that the, that the UAW is really pricing themselves out of their future. You're going to continue to see a dwindling amount of UAW members. They're going to become less dependent on you. They're going to speed up development the same way that you see development happening in these fast food restaurants. You see more kiosks. You see more robots. They literally have restaurants where you don't even need a person over in Japan at all in order to continue to service people, right? I think what happens is they make short-term growth for future concessions and less jobs. You'll have more people... Or you'll have less people making more money temporarily until they eventually phase everybody out. And then everybody going to either have to get a degree, adjust themselves to what the new middle class is going to work for, or, or going to look like. And they all just going to be regular workers at a regular person, you know, at a regular space. And they're going to have, everybody going to need multiple jobs in the future because nobody's going to have a job anymore. That's just the truth. Like, if you want to know the honest to God truth, that's just the truth. I dropped a link in the chat for y'all to be able to come up here if y'all want to. Let me continue. <clears throat> And we're not backing down to anybody. And just down the road from Solidarity House, UAW members at Detroit's MGM Grand Detroit, Motor City Casino, yep. and Hollywood at Greektown yep. are taking a strike authorization vote as we speak. All three, all uh, three Detroit casinos are all all ready to strike. They've been telling me that for the last uh, few months. They had already been planning a strike in the first place. So you're going to start seeing strikes over at the Detroit casinos. You're going to start seeing strikes over at uh, across across the United States as far as these rolled out strikes from Sean Fain. But let me continue. They're part of the Detroit Casino Council, a group of five unions working <laughs> together for a fair contract. Following COVID shutdowns and with, throughout Detroit casino workers that faced all kinds of sacrifices. They sacrificed raises. They shouldered heavier workloads so the industry could recover. And now workers are struggling to make ends meet, even as the industry generates all time record high gaming revenues. As you know, we have over 18,000 big three members on strike at 41 facilities in 21 states. That includes over 5,000 workers striking at parts distribution centers and CCAs at Stellantis and GM from California to Massachusetts. These facilities represent a key revenue stream for the big three and for years have represented a lower paid tier of workers. And I want to take a moment to acknowledge something very disturbing we've seen on a few picket lines at parts depots. We've heard of multiple instances from California to Michigan to Massachusetts of violence against our picketers from people crossing our picket line. And this is where, where they start to change the narrative, and this is why you need context. So what's happened is a lot of these different places like GM, what they'll do is they'll say, okay, well, since y'all want to go on strike, we're going to send in supervisors and we're going to do contract workers. So they'll bring in contractors to come in and do the same jobs. But what will happen is... The UAW members or the whoever it is that union is striking, they'll stand in front of the car, similar to these environmentalists that don't want you to drive down certain roads. And then they'll say, you, either if you hit me, this is going to be violence against us or whatever, so on and so forth, right? They don't actually want the company to make adjustments and do whatever it is that they're going to do because the company then can say, well, you're replaceable, so we'll just find somebody in order to keep the plant open. They just stand in front of the picking line. And so what he'll do is he'll say, well, these are people that are committing acts of violence against the UAW members or protesters. When in reality, these people is actually just trying to get into work to take advantage of the opportunity that's now presented to them. 
We've had guns pulled on us, trucks and cars rammed through us, and violent threats hurled at us. And I want to be absolutely clear. We will not be intimidated into backing down by the companies or their scabs. Our cause is just. Striking for a better future to protect our communities and to defeat corporate greed is not just our right, it's our duty. And shame on anyone that would engage in this violence against our members. To the public, we invite you to stand with us on the picket line if you support our cause. As you know, in our union, we were red on Wednesdays. This is a tradition begun by our union family in the CWA to honor a striking member who was killed on the picket line in 1989. In our own union, during our 2019 strike at General Motors, one of our union brothers was killed on the picket line. <laughs> Company and scab violence is not new. Our union's been fighting it for nearly a century. We didn't back down then, and we won't back down now. And we know America has our back. Go on TikTok and see what they define as scabs. You'll see some of the videos. This week, we were joined. They be beating on these people's windows and all kind of junk, man. It's like, yo, so you going to tear my car up because we got differences in opinion? And I see you at your loss is an opportunity. You can't be beating on my windows and tearing my car up and beating my hood up. On the picket line by none other than the President of the United States. It was a historic day. We picketed at GM's Willow Run facility where UAW members built the B-24 Liberator bombers during World War II. Our union was essential in building what was called the arsenal of democracy. <laughs> Just like 80 years ago, today, our union is building a different arsenal of democracy. But this war isn't against some foreign country. The front lines are right here at home. I'm going to start bringing y'all up shortly. Working class versus corporate. I'm going to start bringing y'all up shortly. I think he almost done with this speech. Marcus Hill, I'm about to bring you up. Corporate greed. We are the new arsenal of democracy. The workers are the liberators. And our strike is the vehicle for liberation. I want to be clear about one thing about the president's historic visit. The most powerful man in the world showed up for one reason only. Because our solidarity is the most powerful force in the world. When we stand together, united in the cause of economic and social justice, there's nothing we can't do. With that said, let's talk about bargaining at the big three. <laughs> UAW family, I'm going to be very direct with you. Over the last week, the vice presidents and your national negotiators in my office have been working night and day to bargain a record contract that reflects the record profits we have produced for the big three. Sadly, despite our willingness to bargain, Ford and GM have refused to make meaningful progress at the table. That's why at noon Eastern time today, we will expand our strike to these two companies. To be clear, negotiations haven't broke down. We're still talking with all three companies. And I'm still very hopeful that we can reach a deal that reflects the incredible sacrifices and contributions our members have made over the last decade. But I also know that what we win at the bargaining table depends on the power we build on the job. It's time to use that power. That's why I'm calling on an additional 7,000 members across Ford and GM to go on strike starting at noon Eastern today. I've heard enough. I've heard enough. So how do you negotiate with a terrorist? You don't. You really don't. You either got to be strategic in how it is that you deal with them long term, or you just got to continue to do away with them all together, and I'm not sure that they can afford to do away with them all together.